the answer to the question how long this be your prayer in Jesus name a blind man looking through dark glasses on a stormy night could see that Jesus must come very soon he has to come very soon are you hearing me brother Inger? my favorite plant have mercy Mount Elixir baptized them with since I was here for four years. Listen! Listen to me, people. But the devil is not giving up. He doesn't sing the song also, I surrender all. Huh? Because he come out to mash up Christians. That's what he comes out to do, my dear friends. Uh, he had some sycophantic people like Voltaire. Voltaire said it took 12 men to create a Christian religion. He says, I alone will destroy it. Huh? A demon like him want to destroy the Christian church. But you know while he was dying, he cried out, oh God! As I told you before, I often wonder why the atheists and the agnostic and the skeptics, all of them, dollies, all of them, when there is peace time, they want God. But as they're under pressure, they will never say, oh devil. They will always say, oh God. They believe in God, you know, but as the pressure take them, I don't know about you, but I thank God that God is an awesome God. I have a word for parents today. Don't blame it on the children. Uh, so much violence and crime. And I'm talking about it as I go to Habakkuk. Uh, but let me read this. You know we read in the paper and here on the air of killing and stealing and crime everywhere. And we sigh and we say we notice the trend. This young generation, when will it end? My sermon today is answer the question how long. But can we be sure that it's their fault alone? I mean that maybe a part of it could be our own. Are we less guilty? Huh? Who place in their way too many things that lead them astray? Mm -hmm, including porn. Mm -hmm. Like too much money, too much idle time, too many mo movies of passion and crime. Some people still argue in the Adventist church if we should go to cinema. Too many books that are not even fit to be read. Too much even what they hear said. And too many children encouraged to roam by too many parents who won't even stay home. But we want granny to mind the children. Well, kids don't make the movies and kids don't write the books. They don't paint gay pictures of gangsters and crooks. They don't make the liquor and they don't run the bars. They don't make the junk that addles the brain. That's all done by older folk, greedy for gain. Delinquent teenagers, how we condemn the sins of our nation and blame it on them. But the laws that are blameless, the Savior makes known. Now you tell me here, who is among the first to cast the first stone? In so many cases, it's sad, but it's true. The title delinquent fits older folks too. You see the older people and say, Amen. <laughs> All the time they say, Amen, but not now. They show on the other foot. Uh, so don't blame it on the children. Ladies and gentlemen, I go to our scripture reading immediately. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Habakkuk chapter 1. We ignore the minor prophets at our own peril. But let me go to that. Oh Lord, how long? He asks the question. How long shall I cry? I have the sermon title today. Answer the question. How long? How long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear. Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And they are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked and judgment that never go forth for the wicked that come pass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. This is a last day prophecy. Let me just share this with you about Habakkuk. The book was written around 607 BC. Huh? And there are two questions that are asked in the book of Habakkuk. Two questions. The theme revolves around two questions, Pastor. It revolves around two questions. Why does God permit wickedness to continue in Judah? Huh? And why? The next question. Does God use wicked people to discipline the righteous? That's the question. In the whole book, there are two themes coming across there. Huh? Why is God permitting so much wickedness in the world? And number two, why? Because you see, he used Napoleon to discipline corrupt Roman Catholic Christianity. That's why in 1798, Napoleon decided to slaughter the papacy once and for all. But Napoleon had a problem. He didn't read Bible prophecy. The deadly wound will be healed. So the deadly wound was inflicted in 1798. And Mussolini uh, restored the Concordat and gave back the Vatican the land in 1929. You see, a preacher cannot say what people want him to say, you know. A preacher has to preach the word of God. 
and the Seventh-day Adventist church makes no apologies uh, this is a remnant church come on uh, a Bible prophecy this is the church that God has appointed uh, Noah's Ark in 2013 come on uh, somebody say hallelujah Noah's Ark in 2013 I don't know about you but I sing because I am happy I sing come on uh, because I am free his eye is on the sparrow and he watches over me you know the priest him gave me a book you see the book here the intellectual devotional they gave me that book as a gift mm -hmm. I'm studying it profoundly but they talk about this the book talks about the Civil War between 1861 and 1865 and hundred a hundred years after that you are the lynch mobs the white supremacists who sought to burn violence in the land from the days of Noah, violence has never stopped upon this earth. From the days when Abel uh, was a victim of a pernicious crime perpetrated by his brother Cain, violence has not stopped. And you know what is bad about it? The supremacists in America, as they tortured blacks, have mercy and turn what Billy Holiday said in his poem, the scent of fresh magnolias, uh, have mercy being converted into rotten flesh, burning flesh. Oh my God, oh my God, Billy Holiday muses, uh, southern trees bearing strange fruit. Uh, as he, you know, he reflected on the burning and uh, the killing and lynching of, of innocent blacks in the southern states of America. He's saying blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Uh, have mercy. Black bodies singing and swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from poplar trees, uh, trees uh, uh, bearing dead bodies, uh, tortured uh, and annihilated and mutilated uh, by supremacists who are demon possessed. Let me say this right now. No race, black, white, Japanese, Sudanese, Nigerian, Boko Haram, Taliban. No race will get the victory. No culture, no kingdom will get the victory over crime and violence without the grace of Jesus Christ. We're trying to solve crime. Uh, in our own strength uh, it will not take place uh, a man who is a racist uh, needs to know about the power of almighty God uh, he will stay a racist he will die a racist uh, without the power of the Holy Ghost answer the question uh, how long uh, how long shall I cry Habakkuk is saying uh, this 7 BC 7th century before Christ prophet is asking the question uh, why does God permit wickedness to continue in Judah why is God permitting wickedness right now uh, hello there is to wake up uh, all of us there is to expose uh, uh, the viciousness of sin and crime that is why he permits it my dear friends uh, it's part of the fulfillment of Bible prophecy I want you to know when you see these things come to pass uh, the Bible says in Luke 21 uh, don't look down uh, have mercy where are we to look where are we to look uh, we've got to look up Hallelujah. violence covers the earth violence covers the people it's a violent age are you hearing me what I'm saying there? In the days of John the Baptist, uh, it was a violent age uh, with violent people, with cruel, uh, oppressive, despotic Roman rulers, uh, uh, oppressing Christians there. Have mercy. They felt they had an army and they felt they had it all, uh, not knowing one day the barbarians would strike uh, and cut him off, my dear friends. Rome was not destroyed because of the strength of the barbarians. Rome was destroyed because of the moral weakness of Rome. That is why, you see, I tell you something, G.K. Chesterton, the famous Christian apologist said, the Christian religion has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. Lord have mercy, my dear friends. I'm saying to you, that is where we are right now. Mankind finds the law of God. It's a difficult thing, so they leave it untried. Don't talk about the Sabbath. You curse some people when you tell them about the Sabbath. In fact... If I should wax slightly rough, there are even books printed by some of our evangelical colleagues who describe the Adventist church as a cult. We are cult. I tell you why they say we are cult. We are cult, my dear friends, because we hold on not just to the New Testament, but we hold on to the Old Testament. Let me tell all those who call us a cult, Sonny Moon, are a cult. 
Where one guy controls the minds of people. Ministry of Healing by Ellen White. We don't believe in hypnosis of a mind controlling another mind. Let me tell you something. I understand in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, he whom the sun sets free. Come on. It's free indeed. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hope in the name of Jesus. Grace in the name of Jesus. Salvation in the name of Jesus. And let me tell the church of God and brother Cleveland, Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against you. He's getting baptized today. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And last night we had two baptisms, a Spanish guy and another. And Serene's mom, Shirley, girl, got baptized last night. They couldn't wait for today. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Crusade done and crusade continues in Jesus' name. Because wherever the power of God is, come on, there is love and there is peace and there is conviction. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Did I hear you say amen? Oh Lord, how long? In the book of Revelation chapter 6, under the fifth seal, the souls under the altar are crying out, how long? Let me tell you something. We are not a cult. We are a mission-based, Holy Ghost-driven church. Come on, somebody say amen. Commandment-keeping, Bible-believing. Come on, somebody say amen. Holy Ghost-injecting. We believe in the book. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something right now. I was born into the church. Some people say you mustn't say that. The fast. The outer place. I was born in this church. I am happy to proclaim that choir members. I know where I came from. Have mercy. I get excited here. I know where I came from. I know where I am. And thank God I know where I'm going. Because one day the trumpet, come on, shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. First Corinthians 15. This mortal will put on immortality. And this corruptible will put on incorruption. Did I hear you say amen? When I get to heaven and I eat of the trees of life for the healing of my bald head. I will have hair. Have mercy. Did I hear you say amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What are you laughing at? Praise the Lord. Why dost thou show me iniquity? And cause me to behold grievance. For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are those that raise up strife and contention. Let me tell you something. Omar Khayyam, an Iranian scholar and poet. In describing uh, the fingers uh, in Daniel chapter 5. His name is Omar Khayyam. And what he says? The moving finger writes. And having read, it moves on. Not all the piety and wit Omar Khayyam says uh, shall move it back to cancel half a line. Uh, have mercy. No, all the tears wash a word of it. Uh, many, many to kill your passing. Uh, where in the balances uh, and found wanting. Uh, there is what is called a figure of speech uh, called personification. Uh, that is where you give life, mm -hmm. have mercy, to inanimate and dead objects there. It is Revelation chapter 6. Some people use this text uh, to prove that the dead live on. But the Bible says, the living know that they shall die. Ecclesiastes 9.5. But the dead know not what? Anything. Revelation chapter 6. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long? Answer the question. How long? They're asking a question. Uh, just the hell over there. There's a cry for justice. This is personification. All right. The presence and memory of those who died for Jesus Christ. They died unfairly. They were persecuted. They were tortured by Rome and all other persecuting powers. They asked the question, how long? Let me tell you something. How long, O oh Lord, holy and true, dost thou not a judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell in the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that it should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Hello there. Souls under the altar. Uh, have mercy. This represents a cry for justice. Uh, didn't Mark Antony in the funeral of Julius Caesar use personification as a method of communicating? Uh, Mark Antony, unlike Brutus, at two Brutus, have mercy. Brutus has come up, become a symbol in the world of betrayal. 
of, 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 of a, a treacherous kind of behavior. But Mark Anthony used the following. Uh, uh, used the following uh, expression. Uh, Behold how the wounds uh, up their lips meaning open the old anglo-saxon language up meaning open behold how these wounds up their lips hello there the wounds weren't really opening your lips but he was describing what he saw there hello there have mercy as if as if, if they would talk as if they could communicate they will tell about the treachery and the betrayal of cassius and brutus and all those who felt it was time for caesar to go ladies and gentlemen Manner. and so we have a cry for justice and we know it won't be long now because I don't know about you but I hear a trumpet sounding the king is coming the king is coming did I hear you say amen all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all Hello there, have mercy. Yes, standing uh, on the promises. Uh, the Adventist Church is standing on the promises of Christ our Savior. We know he will come. Because let me tell you something. When God makes a promise, God keeps the promise. I'm telling you that uh, this morning uh, I want to deal with a woman called Jezebel. If ever there was a toxic uh, piece of protoplasmic rotten flesh, it was Jezebel. When you have a daughter, never call her Jezebel. I see the court intervene. The mother call her son Messiah. Mm -hmm. And the court intervene. You understand? Church and state. We got to watch that. But we are not surprised. Are you hearing me? We are not surprised. We know where the world is going. Take a drink. We know where this world is going. This is a wicked world. And I want to tell you where she was at. First Kings chapter 18. Elijah has performed some miracles in First Kings chapter 17. Do you remember that, my dear friends? And the miracles and his Holy Ghost power is antagonizing compromised religion. We're talking about the people of God have been compromised. Jezebel, and I will tell you about Jezebel today. Oh, it, it is no accident that hell rhymes with Jezebel. No accident, the hell rhymes with Jezebel. She was, she had a father, and you should know about her father. Her father was king of Sidon, and his name was Edbal, Bel. In other words, Bel was in his name. The commitment of Jezebel's family, blood family I'm talking about now. Oh, uh, commitment of the blood family to the worship of Baal and sun worship. And by the way, you know Solomon is right. He said there is nothing new under the sun. So when we have Easter with bunny rabbits and huh, Easter eggs, you know they are symbols of fertility. You understand that, my dear friends. When Ezekiel and Jeremiah talks about women weeping for Tammuz, you know what we are talking about there. When we hear about December the 25th not being the birthday of Christ, but the birthday of the sun god Tammuz, you understand what we are talking about there. Have mercy. That woman called Jezebel was not an easy woman. And by the way, she was an awesome succession planner. Three children. Let me give you the names quickly. Ahaziah, have mercy. And Jehoram, what it sounds. And she was preparing them. You see, there were two kingdoms. The Israel kingdom in the north and the kingdom of Judah in the south. There were two kingdoms there. And she had her sons. You know, I often feel perhaps, you know, Jezebel was planning to get rid of Ahab too. To install her sons. But not only was she powerful in the northern kingdom of Israel. She was powerful in the southern kingdom. Guess what happened? She had her sons running the show with Ahab, her husband. Huh? No man at all. He had surrendered every ounce of his manhood to that termagon called Jezebel. That witch. That witch. Who had one desire. One desire to mash up the people of God. One desire. But she had a beautiful daughter called Athaliah. Athaliah was positioned, have mercy, by her mother Jezebel to be the queen of the southern kingdom of Judah. So in the north, you had Israel. In the south, you had Judah. But in all of those northern and southern kingdoms, Jezebel was in charge. Jezebel went further than that. Have mercy. You would remember that Elijah told the people, how long? 
That's the question. Habakkuk asks the question, how long? Revelation chapter 6 is asking the question, how long to avenge the soul slaughtered by corrupt Roman Christianity and pagan Rome also asking the question, how long Elijah brings the people on Mount Carmel, a place juxtaposed to the valley of Megiddo. And we talk about the, the, the battle of Armageddon being the last battle. Asking the question, how long? How long? How long do you hold between two opinions? The New King James Version says, How long do you falter between two opinions? Have mercy. Uh, for three and a half days, this toxic, polluted, compromising, vicious, brutal, murderous woman called Jezebel have been positioned to offspring uh, to take over both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Uh, in case you didn't know, Jezebel wanted to form a coalition uh, to unite the north with the south. Uh, and she would be in control. Uh, let me tell you something, brother. Uh, uh, man appoints, but God disappoints. Especially when you want to go against uh, the word of God. Come on, somebody say. Uh, you have to understand that. Uh, and let me warn all those on the internet uh, who seek to pulverize the church of God. Uh, and we have some traitors among us uh, who go against the word of God. Uh, who don't understand about pure and undefiled religion. Uh, visiting the widows and the fatherless in their affliction. Uh, who don't understand uh, Isaiah 40. That the grass with a ritter and the flower faded. Uh, surely the people is as grass. Uh, the grass with a ritter and the flower faded. Uh, but the word of our Lord uh, shall stand forever. I make no apologies. Uh, this church uh, is buffeted on every side. Uh, there are those who want. Uh, and you know what is so sick about some people in the church? Uh, even some of our leaders uh, who are pushing for cinema and pushing for jewelry and pushing for disco. Have mercy there. And pushing to eat a little bit of all the poison the world is poisoned with. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I was reading a book last night. Uh, not even written by a Seventh-day Adventist. Let me tell you it was written by. It is written uh, by the most brilliant scholar in the cognitive education department of Harvard University. His name is Howard Gardner. And in that book, he talks about the perils of the cinema, of the false imaging of Hollywood, about the loss of cultural identity through Hollywood there. And there are seven day Adventists who want us to go back there. Let me tell you something. One thing I have learned, and thank God for a mother who believed in the word of God. One thing I have learned, hello dear, that science and culture are not ahead of the Bible, but they have to catch up with the Bible. Did I hear you say amen? Uh, when you study what chronologists say, they are saying, uh, and by the way, let me tell you something, black entertainment television uh, has been an awesome disappointment. It's like if they're playing for the market share too. Uh, are you hearing me, Brother uh, And in case you don't know, Oprah Winfrey has also been a disappointment. She has gotten so big with a $25 billion bank account uh, that she could hardly call the name of Jesus. Uh, Sister Anderson, how are you doing, sweetheart? I miss you last night. I thought you were going away. Have mercy. Listen, God is an awesome God. Let me tell you something. People are talking about going back to the natural. People, environmental experts in the field of ecology, they are saying that the Sabbath have mercy. People are not even Seventh-day Adventists. The ecologists are saying there is something about the Sabbath that frees the world from pollution, that makes us fall in love with the environment. One scholar said recently here, if there's one group of people who understand about ecology and being environmental, friendly it must be the seven day adventist church Amen. are you hearing where i'm coming from there god is an awesome god came to pass elijah was under pressure then and we are under pressure now but you see you see the bible says in the last days the spirit of elijah will come back to the church of the living god the message of Elijah must be preached. Mount Carmel and Armageddon. There's a geographical proximity between the valley of Jezreel, the ridge of Jezreel. Carmel and Armageddon. Ha, Megiddo there. That is the relationship. What is called a prophetic juxtaposition. Have mercy of these geographical entities. Carmel is important. Have mercy for the church of the living God to build courage and build faith. Have mercy. The same Elijah says, as the Lord liveth, he says, go, 
the Lord and it came to pass after many days uh, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying go show thyself unto Ahab and I'll send rain upon the earth because of the apostasy you know nothing is new the new age movement for example the new age movement the fastest growing religion you know what they say is their philosophy we were gods before we are gods now and we shall continue to be gods and the humanists say there's a part of you called God locked inside of you uh, and, and we control that box inside of us that is theological bunker my dear friends hello none of us can control God because you can't limit God to space and time he's everywhere at the same time come on he's omnipresent Elijah understood that and God told him go and show yourself unto Ahab Jezebel had the off had orgiastic cultic practices in the groves Hello there. Under every tree in high hill, she had a grove. And not only did she have her sons worshiping Satan, Ahaziah and Jehoram, but she also had Atalia, the queen of Judah, in the south, worshiping false gods, orgiastic fertility rites, have mercy, where they, submit, they offer the, the, the virginity of young girls. Uh, blood and sacrifice and by the way don't wait for Mount Carmel to understand about strange fire don't wait on Mount Carmel to understand that Jezebel brought fire to the groves all the time and that is why she got set up you know God is a set up artist himself you have to understand God you see Jezebel was accustomed bringing strange fire you know the Bible talks about strange fire in my country they have larger bless ball of fire running over the place Large are blessed, my dear friends. And people say, as original, original, my Paul head. What original? That is devil worship, my dear friends. People tell me they heard a dead mother and their dead father talking to them. It was not your dead mother and not your dead father. It was a living Satan impersonating your dead father and your dead mother. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm coming from, Roderick? And Elijah, it's my time I'm taking. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a soft famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now the Bible says, Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. She was a serial killer. Why are some of you looking at me so strange? Like if you're attacking women. Oh, I'm attacking one woman here, Jezebel. She was a serial killer. She was a Charles Manson. Uh, that's what she was there. She was a vicious woman. She was controlled. Imagine a woman imported 850 prophets. You call that demonic globalization. Brought in 850 prophets to feed at the table. And not only that, you ever wondered why Elijah came and called the people at the time of the evening sacrifice? The 850 prophets of Baal had, had, had replaced the prophets of God because she killed them. She cut them off. And she had the prophets of Satan worshiping. Have mercy. Have mercy. In the heavenly sanctuary. In, in the earthly sanctuary. That is what she had. That's what she was doing. Have mercy. So they were half Christian and half pagan. Are you hearing where I'm coming from, Brother? They were half demon worshippers and half God worshippers. But no man can serve two masters. You have to decide. And let me tell Brooklyn and the Bronx and all those on in cyberspace. You have to decide who you're serving. You can't have a piece of the devil on the left hand and piece of the devil on the right hand. You have to serve God. It's not just a piece of the Bible. It's the whole Bible. The grass with the ritter and the flower faded. Surely the people is as grass. The grass with the ritter and the flower faded. But the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Mercy. <laughs> she cut off the prophets of the Lord. Obiah hid a hundred of them. So she killed God's prophets. Brought in replacements. Every high hill. Under, under every green tree. Second Kings chapter 8. She had prophets of Baal worshipping the devil. And when they went into the groves, they went in the sanctuary. And tried to bring demonic worship there. God was displeased. Oh she hated Elijah. You know some people do a lot of crap in their lives. Are you hearing me brother? And you living straight. 
your life embarrasses them. Am I talking the truth, Patrick? Your life embarrasses them. So when you appear on the scene, they embarrass. They're frustrated. They don't know how to handle it. And that was Jezebel. On the afternoon unto Obadiah, have mercy. Go unto the land, unto all fountains of water. Unto all the brooks. For adventure you may find grass to save the horses and mules alive. <laughs> and here it is. So they divided the land between them. Ahab went one way. And Obadiah went one way. Obadiah didn't know where Ahab was. And Ahab didn't know where Obadiah was. And Ahab and Obadiah didn't know where Elijah was. But God knew. Have mercy. God knew. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. God knew where he was. And by the way, we can't fool God, church. We can't fool God. If we're in the cinema, if we commit an adultery, God knows. If we're drinking the alcohol, God knows. Come to the church on Sabbath, playing holy, holy, holy. Uh, singing, we are marching to Zion in reverse gear. Have mercy. But God knows. Are uh, you here, brother? Uh, uh, and as Obadiah was in the way, the old Elijah met him. Verse 7. And he knew him and fell on his face and said, I don't want my Lord Elijah. And he said, I am. God tell the Lord. I want to read the whole thing. But let me give you in let me give you in true Caribbean style the dialogue. You know what happened there? Elijah tell him, You go and tell Ahab you saw me. He said, You don't see the post on the on the tree. You don't see the sign. Wanted dead or alive, Elijah. Obadiah said, You know something? I ain't going by Ahab at all. Because I am instructed to kill you on sight. But I ain't stupid. The day I plan to kill you, I dead. You will just blow your oxygen on me. Your carbon dioxide, sorry. Just blow it on me and I gone through. Not only that, so I'm not going to attempt to kill you. Because you are protected. You are child of the king. I want to describe Elijah for a few minutes. I spent too much time on Jezebel. He was an unflinching uncompromising unique come on somebody say amen uh, ambassador of jesus christ that's who he was uh, and because of his fidelity to duty and his love for the word uh, and being led by the power of the holy ghost uh, that elijah before he met ahab uh, had a had an encounter with a woman of zarephath remember that brothering uh, and she gave him all what she had are you hearing me brothering uh, and then elijah told her let me tell you something uh, the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day of the lord send it rain upon the earth uh, hello when you get victory never 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 get complacent. Are you hearing me, brother? When God does something special for you, don't get complacent because the devil understands something called second spring. Second spring attack. You know, as the miracle took place and the oil wouldn't finish and the meal wouldn't finish, the boy died. The boy died. But the God who made this earth. The God who made the Rocky Mountains. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. The Frangipani, have mercy. And the Oleander, the God who made the, the Pico Plat, have mercy. And the Sem, that God who made the Kiskadi and made the giant eagle too. That God gave Elijah power. And he went up in the room, have mercy. Did I hear you say amen? And he stretched upon that boy. Come on, somebody say amen. God is an awesome God. And that boy was resurrected. Not by Elijah's power, but the power of God in Elijah. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Oh, but I say no. No. He said, so, I know I can't kill you. Because you're protected. But when I go and tell Ahab how I saw you, he would ask where you are. And when I send Ahab to where I thought you had to be, you done disappear already. God pick you up and carry you somewhere else. Ooh! Oh, but that is symptomatic of many Christians in the church. They know about the power, but not experiencing the power. Are you hearing me, brethren? And you know, they found Elijah. And Elijah said to Obadiah, You don't have to go and tell him anything. I'm not afraid of him. Hello? Don't be afraid of your faces, church. A million people could want to kill you. But no man can destroy whom God wishes to preserve. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? 
as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand. I will surely show myself unto him today. I, I am going to show myself in him today. And Obadiah, Obadiah went to meet Ahab. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. Have mercy. You don't have to run from the enemy, you know, brother. You stand your ground. Come on, somebody say amen. Stand your ground. That's a familiar statement. And hear what Elijah telling him. You should ask a Trinidadian that. What Jamaican or Antiguan? Hear what he asked him. I do he that troubled Israel. I do he that troubled Israel. No, the gall, the bold facity. Could you imagine that? Ahab had a wife who brought in 850 demon possessed priests to sit at the Lord's table, polluting the sanctuary service. Have mercy, sacrificing virgins, killing people, blood. On the groves and blood from every high hill. Strange fire coming down there. Uh, having a daughter in the southern kingdom as queen. Uh, and her two sons as the princes. Uh, come on, brethren. Uh, and asking Elijah, are thou he the trouble at Israel? There's coming a time upon this earth uh, when all Bible keeping, Sabbath keeping uh, people of God will be asked the same question. Uh, are you the one responsible for what's taking place in Syria and Afghanistan? Have mercy there. And in Nigeria, are you the one refusing to compromise and let everybody have a good time and do as you please? Uh, are you the ones holding on to the Old Testament as well as the New Testament? Have mercy. You should ask me that. I'll tell him straight, it's the woman you're sleeping with that troubles Israel. I'll tell him that. The woman you're lying down with. Uh, should I ask a, a Caribbean man that? Uh, that's who trouble in Israel. He said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, uh, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Uh, send and gather. This is the man of God. Imagine uh, Elijah. Hello, let me tell you something. Uh, when you are a child of God, uh, and you have the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, uh, and the shield of faith, uh, and the helmet of salvation, uh, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, uh, you give instruction to kings. Ahab trembled in the presence of Elijah. You know. Elijah told him, it's time to end the dichotomy. It's time to end the compromise. Get all the people. Elijah commanding the king. Have mercy. That's the power God gives his servants. Gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal 450. And the prophets of the gross 400. 850 to 1. Let me tell you on people something. I don't care what the world does, how they outnumber you in school and university. They must outnumber you, but never outclass you. Amen. Never. And don't leave the, don't lose the fire. What did Norman Cotton say? He laughed his way to recovery from cardiovascular problems. What did he say? Death is not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragedy is what dies inside of us while we're still alive. Death is not the greatest tragedy. Uh, the passion, the fire, the Holy Ghost was in Elijah. Oh, brethren, praise God for that. Uh, and Ahab did what Elijah said, verse 20. And Elijah came unto the people and said, Again the sermon comes back. How long? How long are you going to break the Sabbath? How long are you worshiping the devil? How long are you talking to the spirits of the dead, which are spirits of Satan? How long you will eat what you want to eat? How long you will dress uh, in an immoral and decent fashion? How long? How long are you going to play games with Satan? How long you will be succumbing to the pleasures of the world? How long are you'll be involved in prostitutionary, pornographic, orgiastic, cultic worship here? How long? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Hello. They trembled in his presence. Prophet. Strong. Dedicated. Holy Ghost inspired. They couldn't tell him a word. Guilt came upon them. How long? How long? The Seventh-day Adventists who need to ask that question too. How long will the married man stay with you as a single girl? How long? How long are you going to drink the, the 1% alcoholic drinks? How long? How long? Have mercy. Will you go to that cinema at midnight uh, uh, with the ungodly Jezebel? How long? How long? How long? How long? How long will you miss Wednesday night services? How long you refuse to pay your tithe and your offering? How long you refuse to witness about the saving grace of Jesus Christ? How long you keep your mouth shut when the world is crying out for a witness? How long? 
How long you will expose your assets and liabilities? How long? I talk about fashion there. How long? How long? How long? Answer the question this morning. How long? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. Then said Elijah unto the people, First Kings 18.22. I, even I alone, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Plus another 400 at Jezebel's table. Let him therefore give us two bullocks. Let him choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces. And lay it on wood and put no fire under. I will dress the other bullock, lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call, hello. The Bible doesn't say this, but I am telling you. When Jezebel heard about fire, she said, piece of cake. She said, piece of cake. I know about fire. I know about fire. Every day, on every high hill, and under every tree, in the groves, fire coming. As the virgins surrendered their virginity to a priest, a bell, fire comes down. I know about fire. And then she said, Elijah's out of his league now. Elijah's out of his league. <laughs> call you on the name of your gods. I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Hello. What it really meant was, you are dead, Elijah. When they said it is well spoken, it meant you are dead, Elijah. You are dead. Because we deal with fire every day. But you see, you are fire and you are fire. Are, are you hearing me, Brachinger? You got fire and you got fire. You have the Lord's fire and you have demon's fire. Hollywood believes in strange fire. Uh-huh. And Elijah teased them, huh? Tell the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many, call in the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they did exactly as they said. And they bawled down the place. They cry in the morning. They cry at night. They cry in the night. And then Elijah had a sense of humor. He told them, Baal took a BB plane and ended up somewhere in Alaska. You have to get a microphone and a computer and a laptop uh, to communicate with him. He's somewhere in the hills there. Or perhaps he got a little tired. Oh, praise God. The God we serve is never tired. The God we serve is never on vacation. 24-7, he's up and about. Come on, somebody say amen. He has all the power. Hello, if you trust in God, somebody say hallelujah. If you trust in God, somebody say amen. The God, my dear friends, God, cry aloud, Elijah told him in verse 20. He said, cry, you're not crying hard enough. He had a hearing problem one day. I never forget in central Trinidad, I went there having an evangelistic program. And I saw a garage in central Trinidad owned by a Hindu God manufacturing company. I saw God being repaired. There was, they had a broken neck and they were plaster Paris in the guy. I saw God apparently fell down and one, one arm got dislodged and they made over a, a mole for a new hand. They're fixing God. And this may sound humorous, but there's a philosophical depth to what I'm saying. We don't have to fix God. Come on, somebody say amen. We don't have to fix God. God has to fix us. Have mercy. No voice. Cry aloud. He's gone on a far journey. He actually telling them, your God or yourself can't be everywhere at the same time. But the God I serve is omnipresent, uh, omnipotent, uh, knows everything, omniscient. Uh, and they cried aloud. Uh, and then they took some cutlasses uh, and they plunged it in their breasts. And they started to bleed. Hello there. They started to bleed. Uh, and Elijah would finish them off. And when that was finished, have mercy, she who killed hundreds of prophets of God, she who tortured Israel, she who tortured the whole world in her hand, had to listen, have mercy, to the voice of Elijah. He says, come near, my people. Come near. There is one other instance in the Bible that resembles this Mount Carmel experience. And that is when Christ prayed before he resurrected Lazarus. Come near, come near unto me. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Elijah broke down the altar of God. 
And he took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. And to whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And he built an altar. And he built a trench around the altar. And he put the word on there. And the bullock he cut in pieces. Have mercy there. And he filled four barrels of water. And then four barrels of water. And then four barrels of water. Twelve barrels of water. Mercy. They did it the first time. They did it the second time. They did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar. What Elijah was showing is uh, he was making sure nobody says he cheated. Nobody could say that he tried something. Uh, he used hypnotism or whatever. Fire had to come from God. And he says, Come near. Come near. And he said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day, not tomorrow. Did I hear you say amen? You have cancer, let it be known this day. Diabetes hurting you down the road, let it be known this day. Have mercy. That I want a God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord thy God, and turn their hearts. And the Bible says, come on, somebody help me. Somebody help me. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The angel of the Lord, Psalm 34, encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. Elijah, Jezebel planted to kill Elijah. If Elijah failed that day and she succeeded, she was going to take off his head. That was the plan she had. But let me tell you something. Long before you are aware of the problem, my God already has the solution. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? And my Bible tells me after the prayer, the fire of the Lord fell. Come on. I want everybody to say, the fire of the Lord fell. After three, one, two, three. The fire of the Lord fell. And what? Consumed the burnt sacrifice. And the stones and all. That is nuclear fire. Pastor Hamilton, stones and all. Wood and all, dust and all, and licked up the water, boiling water, if you please, dear. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. Those who were worshiping Satan, sacrificing their virginity, who had sacrificed their virginity, those who believed in blood sacrifices, those who had a seas with the devil every night and went to the groves on the hill and under every green tree, those that have turned their backs on the Sabbath, those that are wearing their jewelry, have mercy there, those, my dear friends, who had overexposed themselves in the Philistine fashions, all of them who forgot Friday night worship and come into the altar, those who had turned their backs on the Bible, those who had turned their backs on the Ten Commandments, those who had turned their backs and being faithful in their financial stewardship. Those, my dear friends, who had stopped coming to church, those who didn't go to the sanctuary anymore until the prophets of Baal went in there. Have mercy. Those who in bad relationships, those who are misrepresenting the cause of God, hear what they said. Hear what they said. The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. The God of Elijah had power then and he has the same power now come on somebody say hallelujah somebody say amen that god and i want to make one more point to you before i give the appeal one more point to you when moses was in the wilderness remember that after he killed the egyptian slave master who was oppressing his people when moses went in the wilderness there was a bush on fire but it was not consumed. Isn't God awesome? Come on. If you believe in God, somebody say amen. If God has been good to you, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. The bush was on fire. But it was not consumed. But on Mount Carmel, the bullock was on fire. But it was consumed. Come on. God chooses how he operates. Because God is always right. Tell your neighbor God is always right. Tell your neighbor God is always right. Oh, praise God for Jesus. Did I hear you say amen? amen. So Jezebel loved fire. She wanted fire. She prayed for fire. And fire she would get. Be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Oh, she loved fire. 
Oh, my dear friends, how long? How long? And I'm closing off right now. Watch this carefully here. I'm closing off right now. With the Holy Ghost upon me, we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have to answer the question, how long? How long will we take before we get back to the Bible as a church? How long? How long, my dear friends, does it have to take for the church to be on fire, getting ready for latter rain power, former rain power first, and latter rain power? How long before we tell our neighbors that Jesus is coming again? How long before we pull up our children for misbehaving in church? How how long? How long it will take for the elders to come to church on Wednesday night service? How long it will take church board members to get ready for the coming of Jesus Christ? How long might it will take us to forgive the brother who said something bad about us? Lesson study this week. Have mercy. Lesson study from rancor to restoration. Thursday's portion. Come on, my dear friends. How long before we get serious about the spirit of prophecy? How long before we kneel down and pray for hours every day and ask God to anoint us? How long? Well, let me tell you something. We don't have how long time again here. Very much longer here because the devil is angry because he alone knows Revelation chapter 12 that he has but short time. So we have a shorter time to proclaim the everlasting gospel. To fear God and give glory to him for the hour, for the time, for the moment of his judgment has come. Lift up the trumpet. Come on. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it water. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims. Be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. If you love Jesus, somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Pass me not to a gentle savior. Where's the praise team? Where's the praise team? Yes. Pray. Pass me not to a gentle savior. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I'm totally wet. Praise God for his blessings. Pass me not. If you love Jesus, raise your hands today. You love Jesus. You love Jesus. Hallelujah. Wave your hand for Jesus. Wave your hand for Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's all stand. If you love Jesus, stand. the Cleveland come forward for the Cleveland has planned to get baptized today we planned this for him but if anybody would like to join him today you can come forward yourself oh praise the Lord hallelujah Savior oh Savior Do not, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Let's sing the last verse. Let's sing the last verse. Oh yes, together. The spring. And I married. Praise the Lord. Oh yes. Would I seek thy face? Is the Lord broken spirit? Oh, yes, hallelujah! Yes, save me.
we thank you, Brother Cleveland, in a special way. Oh God, if there's anyone else who would like to surrender their lives to you and be baptized now. We may not know who they are, but you know who they are. Just how you knew where Elijah was. You know who they are and where they are and whose they are. Oh God, set them free today. Liberate them. In Jesus' name.